Hey everybody, welcome to T-Roy Cooks. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a Thursday chat with Troy, and if this is your first time here, this is where I answer your questions. So if you've got questions for me, just ask them down in the comments below. And if for some reason I don't have an answer to a question that comes in, um, you know, if you've if you've got a good answer, you know, if you've got experience, please do share your knowledge with all of us. This is a I, I'm saying it's a community. It's all of us that are kind of learning from each other. You know, I learn stuff. You learn stuff. Works out great for all of us. So uh, anyway, this is where I answer your questions. If you check out the description box, just hit show more beneath the video. And if you got the video full screen, you know, uh, collapse it a little bit so that you can hit the show more button down beneath the video. That'll open the description box. I've got the questions there that I'm answering and where at in the video that they're answered. I've also got other YouTube channels that I may mention. You know, a lot of these people that ask me questions, they've also got YouTube channels. So please go ahead and subscribe to them if you're not already. They've all got some great channels. And a lot of them are new too. So uh, I, I definitely enjoy watching the, new, the newbies and see how they progress and uh, get get accustomed to shooting video on camera because it's, uh, it's different. <laughs> but... Um, Anyway, so I've got all that information. I also have my social media and my Amazon affiliate links and Thermalworks links. Um, all kind of cool stuff down there. Y'all be sure and check that out. Just hit show more beneath the video. Uh, tell you what though, this past couple of weeks I was not able to answer any comments. Now I'm going to go ahead and take those questions that y'all asked and put them on my list here. And I got my list for today. But uh, I, I, me and Karen actually went on vacation. You know, my last day at work was May the 12th and the following two weeks we went on vacation i just had videos scheduled to go up while i was away so that's what i was talking about i won't you know won't be able to answer your, your comments and whatnot so appreciate y'all bearing with me i'm getting back in rotation i'll be answering your comments going forward until i take vacation again <laughs> but uh, we went to santa fe new mexico and albuquerque new mexico beautiful area uh went up to taos um man that's it's pretty up there still, still had some snow in the mountains Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, tell you what, man. Y'all know I like to support my local breweries. I got one today we're going to check out. This is, uh, let's see, this is from Brazos Valley Brewing Company. It's called Willen Mosaic Pale Ale. Y'all check that out. Uh, Brazos Valley Brewing Company is in uh, Brenham, Texas. And uh, that's, in fact, you see right here, it's got the Highway 290 sign. Highway 290 is the road leading out of Austin going east to take you to Brenham. So that's why they got that there. And Brenham is also where Blue Bell ice cream is manufactured, folks, if y'all didn't know that. It's a great little area of town. Let's try this pale ale. Let's see what it, what it tastes like. Man, that's good. That's real good. Hmm. Here. Yeah, I like supporting my local business. Hope y'all do the same in your local areas too. Show them some love, man. Let's get down to my questions here. Uh, let's see. Moose down under. My buddy Moose. How you doing, brother Moose? He's down in Australia, folks. He says, question, mate. Myself and a friend are going to build a giant smoker, a barbecue grill this winter. And we're thinking of building a rotisserie. Can you recommend any products that would do the job? We're thinking whole hog and sides of cow, so it has to be sturdy and strong with a decent motor. Cheers, mate. Regards, Moose. Cheers to you, brother Moose. Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm liking that beer, man. Um, it's kind of got like a little, almost a citrus tone to it, but not... I guess it's the hops they use in it that gives it that, that unique flavor. It's good, though. It's, good. it's real light, crisp. But um, y'all go check out Moose Down Under. He's got his channel on YouTube. Uh, he does stuff out in the wild, man. He just recently he was shooting a rabbit out on his his property, and he showed you, sh you know, from it running wild to on his plate and him eating it. Y'all go check him out. He's got all kind of cool stuff though, man. Got to watch them boys down there in, in uh, uh, Australia, man. They're cool. Uh, moose. The only rotisserie that I've ever used is the one that I've got recently from my Weber Smoky Mountain, and I got it from CajunBandit.com. Um, it's it's a pretty sturdy motor on it. It's it's not that wide though. I don't think it'll hold a side of cow. Um, you may have to make your own spit and uh, you know the mounting for it. 
to get it long enough. But once you have it long enough, uh, yeah, you can you can get a motor that will accommodate it, I'm sure. The one that I've got that came with my rotisserie can handle, I think, 35 pounds. Plus, it's got a counterbalance so you can balance the meat on the rotisserie as it spins. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of uh, different motors out there that can do the job. I just don't know where to tell you to go to, to get them since you're in Australia. But um, if any of you have any ideas for them, if, you know, if you're in Australia and you know where to get parts like that, put it down in the comments. Again, we learn from each other. So I appreciate it. And I think I mentioned too, if you got questions for me, ask them in the comments down below. I'll be sure and add them to my list. Thanks for the question, Moose. Great to hear from you, buddy. Andy Black, Missouri, a long time watcher of T-Roy. I don't have a smoker or barbecue because I live in an apartment and they don't allow either. Yeah, I know, man. That's, that's rough living in an apartment, man. He says, what meat would you recommend for a slow oven cook and how would you prepare it? Wow, Andy. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I, I used to live in an apartment uh, back in the day. I would say do a larger cut like a pork butt or even a brisket um, heck even in like a, a tip sirloin tip roast or rump roast you know something like that would work but the oven will work the same as a barbecue pit or a smoker all right you're cooking from heat so the oven is heat now I will tell you the oven will probably cook it a little faster because it's insulated all on all sides um, so you got that going for you, and you won't get any smoke flavor unless you actually inject the meat with some liquid smoke or something like that, or at least pour some of that, some, some of that on to, you know, perhaps baste it with some liquid smoke while it's cooking, or put some on before you put the rub on it to season it, you know, salt and pepper even will work. So help get a little bit of that smoke flavor. The, um, the oven will cook just the same as a, as a pit though. So, I would just cook it low and slow, like I would on my pit, you know, 225, 250, somewhere in that range, and just cook her till she's done. And if you want to, if you really want something that's good and tender, you're going to have to cook it low and slow for a very long time, even in the oven. You know, like brisket, that may take you 15 hours or so in your oven, you know, 12 to 15 hours, I'd say. <laughs> Lucy's over here knocking the chair into the table. But yeah, man, I'd go for a larger cut. That's what I would do. Uh, I have done ribs in the oven. If you want to check out that video, I'll put it up here for you. <clears throat> Appreciate the question, Andy. Next question is from A1 Xavier T Roy. What kind of oil do you use to rub on the grill? I've seen some folks use a WD 40. Uh, yeah, I usually use a cooking oil, a high temp cooking oil, like, like a grapeseed oil or peanut oil. Those are my main two. But any of the higher temp oils would work, especially the firebox area. I don't like WD-40 because it, it gives it a different, a different smell, and I don't, you know, when you heat up the pit, the metal absorbs that oil, and I don't know that I want the metal from my pit that I cook on absorbing WD-40. In my mind, it's kind of like using lighter fluid to light charcoal. Um, I just wouldn't do it, but if it works, you know, I just use regular cooking oil myself. Even vegetable oil would work, you know. But on the firebox, it gets super hot, so you really would like a—you really would want to use a high temp oil, like I mentioned. Uh, appreciate the question, Xavier. Gary Limley, what you got for me, Gary? <laughs> Says uh, I like your opinions and great videos. I'm a big believer that pepper must be freshly ground. What's your opinion? Thanks. Yeah, I definitely love fresh ground black pepper, man. Um, in fact, you know, you grind it in, uh, you know, real fine, or you can grind it coarse, depends on how you're wanting to use it. But yeah, fresh pepper is the way to go. You know, you get them little cans of pepper that's already been, you know, crushed or whatever uh, at, the, at your local grocery. And it's old, it's been sitting on the shelves for no telling how long. It just doesn't have a lot of flavor, but fresh ground black pepper, man, that's got some great flavor. And don't forget about your white pepper and your pink peppercorns. Your green peppercorns, those all have unique flavors as well, not just black peppercorns. So give them a shot. Appreciate the question, Gary. Next question is from The Real Bradley Webb. Is there more than one Bradley Webb? I'm just kidding, man. It says, T Roy, my man, thank you so much for not only taking the time to read the questions. Sorry, 
thanks for taking the time to not only read the comments you receive, but actually responding and answering to them. I always enjoy watching the Thursday chat, and yes, I watch the whole thing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That helps my view time and helps me make more money on YouTube. You know, so if you watch the entire video, I do appreciate it very, very much. So thank you very much. Appreciate that, Bradley. He says, question, I'm looking to purchase a pellet smoker, but want to keep the cost down. That could be kind of hard. Um, he says, I know these things can be pricey, but based on your experience, which would be the best for grilling and smoking at least twice a week? I currently have a Weber kettle style. Thanks to you, Roy. Cheers. Cheers, Brad. Appreciate it, man. Um, a good one that's fairly on the cheap side, um, not too pricey. I would say maybe the Rec Tech. And I'll put links for all this down below. Y'all just hit show more. Uh, yeah, I go with the Rec Tech. But if you really want some some good quality, I'd go with one of the Yoder pellets like the YS640. I mean, they're really, really good. High quality. Um, Traeger makes one, you know, it's pretty good. Um, who else? Can't think of it, but uh, yeah. Try Rec Tech. In fact, I think my buddy Larry Wolf over the Wolf Pit, he's got a Rec Tech. <coughs> Excuse me. Larry's got a Rec Tech, so check out Larry's channel. I'll put it down below. Um, he cooks on his quite often, so. Let's see what else we have here. Appreciate the question, man. John Doro, my best to you and Karen, Troy. Thanks, appreciate that, John. Says, I've got another question. Do you and Karen have a teardrop trailer that we see hanging from the tree and in your app? Yeah, don't forget about that, folks. I've got a Troy Cooks app on both the Android and the, uh, the iTunes store. They're going to check them out, man. I'll put the link for all that down below. Um... Let's see, he says, if so, can we get a tour? I'm in the market for a camper and would like to know your thoughts. Cheers from up north. John, man, we used to have a Kinskill, like an old Kinskill, 64, I think, Kinskill trailer. Uh, it's about an 18-footer, you know, 19-footer, somewhere in that range. But uh, those are cool. I like those old trailers. It even had a, a, a gas lamp in the front end of it. Uh, you know, above the, the cooking area, around the cooking area, so you could light the, the lamp with the propane gas. That was pretty cool. But, uh, man, it was all, all wood cabinets, even had uh, pink uh, appliances, had a pink refrigerator, a pink stove. Karen loved it. But um, we sold it a few years ago, so we don't have it any longer. But, yeah, that's that's kind of the, one of the reasons that Karen got that, that bird feeder back here, or the whatever you want to call it. Actually, a bird nest is in it right now. So, uh, anyway, just reminds us of that. We, we do like the older style campers, and uh, we're going to probably get one in the future again. So, uh, don't really have any advice for you, other than if you get an older one, look all around it, inside, outside, under it, on top of it, you know, make sure that everything works. You know, a lot of those appliances and things, like the stove that we had in ours, uh, the, the, the stove didn't work. You know, it was pink, it was pretty, but the stove didn't work. And, and the fridge kind of had some rust in it, so you couldn't really put anything heavy in it. So just, just look for things like that, you know. I love the camping life. When Karen retires here in, in probably like five years, we're going to hit the road. So I may do me doing some videos uh, on uh, camp, camping out. That'd be cool, huh? All right, next question is from Mike Coughlin. Mike, how you doing, man? Great to hear from you. Regarding oiling the outside of your pit, I've stayed away from that because I've heard that it attracts dust and makes the smoker grimy. Hmm, I hadn't heard about that, man. Usually you heat up the pit after you put the oil on it, and the metal absorbs the oil, so it, it doesn't get sticky or grimy, at least not, not that I've seen. He says, have you experienced that? No, I hadn't. Would you expect it on a trailer-mounted smoker more than a stationary one? Not, not really. Again, I mean, if you heat the if you heat the metal up, you fire up the pit after you oil it down. That metal absorbs the oil. You know, it, it penetrates the metal. Uh, so it's not going to be tacky or sticky unless you're using some cheap oil. Maybe you know, if you use a good quality oil. It should work out really well for you, and I wouldn't 
see any instances of it being hauled around on a trailer and you getting bugs all over and stuff not any more than you would at the front end of your truck or something you know I mean you're going to get stuff on it unless you cover it but as far as getting grimy and stuff no I, I wouldn't see that happening but again I've never done it if any of you have let me know let, all, let us all know appreciate the question Mike Next question is from Raul Flores. Or Raul Flores. Thanks. Appreciate the question, Raul. T Roy, what are your thoughts on powder coating a Yoda pellet, a Yoder pellet grill to protect it? That'd be awesome. Plus, you can choose the color you want on it and everything like that. I've actually thought about doing that to my uh, my Wichita. I think that'd be wonderful, man. Plus, you ain't got to worry about the rust. You know, powder coat that baby. Kind of expensive, but if you can do it. Go for it. Um, he says, uh, do that to protect it or would you just oil it? For me, it's a little too pricey to powder coat it, so I'm just oiling mine. I did buy some paint for mine, though, from Yoder. So, uh, you know, I may paint it here in a little bit, you know, later in the summer. We'll, we'll see. It says, uh, da, 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 da. He says, thanks for your great videos and cooking like Texas. Thanks for the great videos. I'm cooking like Texas out here in California. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to you, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. Chevy, 1121-1947. What's going on, Chevy? Ain't heard from you in a while, man. <clears throat> says, how about having Karen and you make a video on her home salsa and share with us? Keep the videos coming. Thanks, T-Roy. Chevy, I think Karen did a salsa video. Pretty sure. If I can find it, I'm pretty sure we did, but if I find it, I'll put it up here for you, okay? So hang around for that. If, if I can't find it, then yeah, I'll be happy to do one for you and let Karen take the reins in front of the camera. Uh, appreciate the question, Chevy. Uh, next question is from my buddy Keith Betag. How you doing, Keith? Y'all go check out Keith's channel. Great channel, man. Love you guys. Terry, Keith, cheers. What's Keith got for me? I uh, got a question for you. Don't think it's been asked before. Do you remember what the first thing you ever cooked was and how old were you when you did it? Because my first was a Red Devil's food cake from scratch when I was in the third grade. And in those days, come on, in those days we used an old wood stove for cooking in the kitchen. Man, I wish I had one of those now. Cheers, buddy. Uh, cheers to you, Keith. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate the question. I was just thinking, if any of you folks out there have an old wood-fired stove like they had back in the day that you don't need or don't want, talk to Keith Betag. Apparently he needs one. Uh, Keith, let's see. I think the first thing I ever cooked, it wasn't really cooking per se, but I made some homemade potato salad. You know, I I seen my mom do it several times, numerous times actually. And they were at work, and, and I was going to try to uh, make the homemade potato salad to go with whatever we were having for the main dish. But that, that's probably the first thing I cooked. You know, wasn't really cooking, like I said, just had to boil the potatoes in, you know. So, um, other than that, heck, I don't know, I'd say hamburgers or something. Something simple. Wasn't anything major. Man, I remember sitting on the countertop. Right next to my mom, she had the uh, one of the old KitchenAid mixers, and uh, was it KitchenAid? Maybe Sunbeam. I can't remember. It was an old mixer, and uh, I remember her mixing up cakes. You know, she was always she was a great baker, still is. But man, I used to love licking that bowl, the icing, and licking the the, the actual batter for the cake. Good stuff. Good stuff, man. Appreciate the question, Keith. Next question is from Small Beans 101. He says, can you use a toaster oven to cook a steak? And also, do you have a hot dog recipe? Yeah, you can definitely cook a steak in your toaster oven. Um, check out uh, Toss Tin Man. Uh, my buddy, uh, Jim. He does toaster cooks all the time. But uh, yeah, I've done it myself and it does great. You know, I prefer to put it on the broil setting myself and uh, just kind of sear it on each side, you know, flip it in between. Works great though, man, works real good. If you got bacon wrapped around your steak, it crisps that bacon up real good too. 
But uh, I've done it also you know, kind of like a reverse sear kind of thing where I, I cook it low and slow. You know, maybe 175, 200-ish, somewhere in that range for like half an hour or so. And then I put it on broil and sear the outside. That works great too. But um, I appreciate the question. Oh, I don't have any hot dog recipes. In fact, I'm, I want to make some sausages and stuff using my, uh, my Thunderbird commercial grinder that I bought way back uh, several years ago. I rarely use it. But now that I've got more time, I'm going to try to do some more videos on sausages. And maybe I'll see if I can do one on hot dogs, too. Or, uh, you know, uh, bratwurst, stuff like that. So we'll see. But if any of you folks out there have a good hot dog recipe, I'm guessing he's talking about making his own hot dogs. Uh, go ahead and uh, put it in the comments down below so that... Uh, Small Beans, is that what it said? Yeah, Small Beans 101 can uh, check it out. I appreciate it. Thanks for the question, Small Beans. Big John's cooking. Y'all go check out Big John, man. The dude recently got him some uh, some lights, man. He wrote in earlier, and uh, a couple weeks ago or so, I was, I was answering a question, I believe. He was, uh, he's a new new YouTube channel. You know, well, he, he doesn't have a large subscriber count, but uh, I think he's around 250 subscribers or so. But y'all go check him out, man. He's got some killer, killer recipes, man. Great great uh recipes for for you know for dishes and whatnot but i was mentioning that i thought he, he could use a little bit better lighting so he went out got him some lighting y'all go check him out big john's cooking man link down below big john says great show love it thank you appreciate that john question have you tried wild hog and or cooked it like to see it keep keep up the great work big john no, John, I haven't, man. Um, they got plenty of feral hogs and whatnot are all around here, but I've never cooked or captured any kind of wild hogs. Um, I could probably get my hands on one, though, because, like I said, they're plentiful down here in Texas. Not too far from here in Austin. So, yeah, I can definitely do that. We'll see, see if I can get it done for you. Appreciate the suggestion, and thanks for the question. Next question is from Rachel Leal. How you doing, Rachel? Thanks for the question. What do you think about the kick ash basket for the Kamado Joe? And do you own one? That's a pretty cool little accessory, and uh, I do not—I don't own one, but uh, I've seen seen them in action on other folks' uh, YouTube channels. But uh, yeah, man, I'd say go for it. it Looks like a great little basket, you know, for your charcoal and stuff. Pretty cool. If you get one, let us know how it works out. She says, uh, I mean, Rachel says, thinking about buying one for my Kamado Joe, which will be delivered this coming Saturday. Okay, well, this is probably about a month and a half old, <laughs> these questions. I'm usually about six weeks behind, maybe eight. But, uh, yeah, so congrats on the new Kamado Joe, Rachel. Hope you're enjoying it. I'm sure you've got it broken. I'm sure you've been doing plenty of cooks on it, especially Memorial Day this past weekend. So, uh, you know, have a great summer barbecuing. Godspeed. Keep the smoke rolling, Rachel. Cheers. Let us know about that kick ash basket. Next question is from Farm Silver. Ever smoked boneless rib pork ribs? Yep, sure have, man. He says up here they call them country style pork ribs. Yeah, I think they call them that here as well. Yeah, country style ribs, they're boneless. Um, I want to say it's like the pork butt that they just slice up, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. So if so, what's your preferred method and cook time? I just grill them like I would a steak, to be honest with you. Um, I have done them low and slow, like uh, like I would a pork butt. You know, and then um, they they really take a liking when you wrap them, especially put a little butter and a little bit more barbecue rub in there in the foil packet that you uh, seal them up in and let them finish cooking. You don't really get a good bark like that, as I've explained, unless you remove or take, you know, peel away the foil at the very end, but... Uh, if you just want some good tender ribs, go for it, man. That's low and slow is the way to go, and full wrap that son of a gun at the end, uh, or about halfway through the cook, actually. Um, but they taste great if you just grill them, you know. I, on my gas grill, I grill them. It's good stuff, man. Real good stuff. Based a little barbecue sauce on there. Yum. Cheers to you from another Bush Beer Man. Thank you. Cheers back to you. Appreciate that for him. All right, next question is from Kane Almond. T-Roy, I recently discovered your channel and videos, and I thoroughly enjoy it. Thanks, Kane. Thank you very much for the support, man. It says, I've learned so much. I have a question for you. I recently stepped up my game and bought a 270 Smokers Sumo model. 
Have you ever heard of them? Check them out online and uh, they're works of art. No, I have not heard of the 270 smokers, but I'll definitely be checking them out. The sumo line, you say? Check it out, man. Appreciate the uh, suggestion. So my question is, what do you use to clean your grates on the inside, the grates and the inside of your smokers? Thanks for any advice you can give. I just use a regular barbecue wire brush, you know, the stiff bristle brush. Um, every once in a while, like maybe every four to six cooks, I'll take some, like a, a dish towel or something and coat it down with some oil, just regular vegetable oil, and I'll coat the inside of my grill grates, you know. But uh, for the most part, I just fire up the uh, the pit or my grill and let the heat burn off or harden any of the uh, barbecue sauce or anything else that may be on the grill grates. And I just go and scrape, scrape, it, scrape it down with a wire brush right before I put the meat on there. That's usually how I do it. Next question is from Brian Wesson, thinking about getting a 22 Weber Smoky Mountain. My question is, how much charcoal do you use to smoke ribs using your Kingsford? Thanks, man. Love the channel. Appreciate that, Brian. Um, let's see. Cheers. I've got the 22 and a half inch WSM, and when I'm doing anything like a six hour cook or longer, I'll just dump a full bag of Kingsford Blue and I use the minion method <coughs> excuse me I use the the minion method where you know I uh, I leave a hole in the center I put all the charcoal just empty the bag in there separate the middle or you could uh, you could also put your um, your chimney down in the middle of the charcoal grate and pour charcoal around it and then pour the rest of the charcoal in your uh, your chimney and light it right there so when you pull the chimney out you've got a nice hole in the middle and charcoal briquettes surrounding it and then when that chimney is done your coals are lit dump those in the middle and the minion method will well they call it the minion method some guy named minion created it I forget who's what his real name is but uh, those hot coals will eventually spread out to the rest and you get even heat and a long slow burn that way the other method is a snake method that also works really good but with the snake method you've got zones of heat because it's not it's not it's not expanding from the middle outward like the minion method so with the snake method you may have to you know rotate the meat around or you know spin it around just for even cooking basically um, if, if I'm just doing like some chicken maybe a three to four hour cook if that I may use a half a bag of Kingsford blue but uh, most of the time I just pour the whole bag in there because what I like to do is, you know, I'll just pour the whole bag in there and if I don't need all the charcoal, if I'm done with my cook, I'll just close all the vents and that'll put the fire out and then I can reuse those that didn't burn up, the charcoal briquettes, I reuse those on my next cook and if it's, a, it's like chicken or something, I have plenty of charcoal briquettes left. The only thing you got to worry about it is if it rains a lot where you are, that moisture can get into your charcoal briquettes and make them not fire properly, you know, next time you try to cook with them. So that's a concern, but just just cover your pit after it cools down, you know, cover the Weber Smoky Mountain so it doesn't get water in there. All right, I appreciate the question, Brent. Next question is from Jose Perez. Hey, T-Roy, you ever go fishing? Man, I love to fish. I really, I really would like to go catch some uh, some rainbow trout. Yeah, man. I, I'm not. I've never fly fished, but just regular fishing off the bank. Yeah, um, I've been fishing in a boat a few times, but I usually just fish off the bank. And um, I love crappie, uh, white bass, regular bass, largemouth, um, all kind of cool stuff. Anyway, cheers. Uh, appreciate the question. Um, let's see. Jose, Jose, Jose. Um, all right, next question is from White Thunder Barbecue. Y'all go check him out. My brother Nate. How you doing, Nate? Says, hey, T-Roy, have you ever cooked a full beef clod? No, I haven't, Nate. I have not done that, but they are plentiful out here in Texas. I'm definitely planning on doing that. But, uh, yeah, man, that, there's a bunch of different cuts that I would like to try. Even some of those Brazilian-type cuts, you know. But yeah, man, life's good. 
think this is going to be a great summer. I hope each of you have a, a wonderful summer barbecuing and cooking. You know, and, and I appreciate, you know, I'm getting plenty of posts on my Facebook page. Y'all do a cook. Y'all take a picture, post it, on, post it on my Facebook page. I love that, man. And this past Memorial Day weekend, for all of you that contacted me and asked for assistance or advice or even sent me pictures, I appreciate it very much. That was fun. That was real fun. You know, because I actually didn't, didn't barbecue anything Memorial Day. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man, that was cool. And uh, all the fallen servicemen and women out there, uh, God bless you. Thank you for protecting our country. And the ones that are still with us today, same to you. God bless you. Appreciate your... Uh, your efforts to help keep this free society going and protecting each one of us. You guys, uh, you guys and gals do a wonderful job and uh, much love. That's all the questions I got, folks. Um, I'm not sure how long this one's going to be. I tried to catch up, so I did a few extra, maybe 20 questions or so. But, uh, man, this beer's good. I'm going to go finish it off. I'm going to go see if I can edit this video because today's Wednesday. i got to have it up for you guys in the morning. Uh, again. If you have questions ask them in the comments down below click show more beneath the video to open that description box and you'll find a ton of information in there and if you're not subscribed to some of the youtubers that I put down in there y'all go check them out and I hope you do subscribe and support their channels as well uh, we'll see y'all next Thursday folks if y'all enjoy this y'all give me some thumbs up hope you share the video and when you do please tell all your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly cheers Oh, that's good.